This episode of Inside Louisiana Athletics is brought to you by Park Place Surgical Hospital. Hi, I'm Marcel Johnson. Tonight on Inside Louisiana Athletics, Diamond Sports picked up huge conference series wins this past weekend as our Darren Walker sits down with assistant head coach Lacey Prejean to discuss their series sweep of Georgia Southern. But first, baseball picked up a huge Sunbelt series win at the T. Head coach Matt Deggs is here to discuss their back and forth series against Coastal Carolina and look ahead to the Warhawks of UL Monroe. You're watching Inside Louisiana Athletics. Hello and welcome to Inside Louisiana Athletics. What a weekend for Raging Cajuns baseball as they take three of four from Coastal Carolina at Rousseau Park. The Cajuns now 14 and 11, two and one in conference. And here now to break it all down is the head coach of the Raging Cajuns, Matt Degg. So uh, uh, let's talk about the pitching. I don't want to uh, take anything away from the, the guys at the plate, but on the weekend, the pitching was just really phenomenal. Even in the game that you lost on Saturday, uh, they still gave you a chance to win that one. 11 runs all weekend, 35 strikeouts. Um, again, your guys got it done at the plate too, but the arms were phenomenal. Yeah, they were. And we'll go as our pitching goes, which is the case with most ball clubs, uh, unless you're just extremely offensive. But Spence Arigetti got us off to a great start mm -hmm. again. Uh, it seems that's been the theme every week for the whole season. And, you know, had a career uh, high in strikeouts, I believe, at 11. Yep. And, and I wanted him to finish that thing and just started grinding there. I think it was eighth. Uh, but what a start uh, he got us off to. Schultz, he comes in and finishes it. And then uh, Saturday, Carter Robinson gives us four innings with one run. And th that run was on a ground ball. And uh, I thought our bullpen came in and did a, a pretty good job. I thought mm -hmm. Chipper did well. We got a couple of silly walks. Uh, but then Nelly and Tally behind him. And like you said, gave us a chance to win that game. Uh, we've got bases loaded in the ninth and uh, just don't come away with it. And then uh, Sunday, the job AP and, and Cookie did was just nothing short of phenomenal. Let's talk about uh, or get into the specifics a little bit of these games. Let's start with Friday night. The weather for this one was just really ugly, but on the field, it was a thing of beauty. Uh, big second inning for you guys, six runs plated. Uh, then you get three more in the third. And when you give Spencer a nine nothing lead, I mean, that young man can just kind of settle down. And like you said earlier, a seven and a third, one earned run that he came, that he did give up came after he exited the game. Like you mentioned, uh, 11 strikeouts and 129 pitches. Well, they, they had a chance to get to him in the first and second. And uh, he was able to, to pull a little Houdini act there in the first <laughs> and get out of it. And then Connor Kemple bailed him out in the second with a great throw from left. Uh, and then uh, Ozzie, Drake Osborne, put a great tag on the runner coming home to score and kind of gave us back the momentum, and we mm -hmm. were able to come in and uh, have a really big inning, probably our best inning of the year offensively. Uh, but what that did, and then consequently the next inning was a good inning as well, it allowed Spence to get back on schedule with his pitch count and because he was pretty taxing the first mm -hmm. two innings. And then he was able to go – pretty much exclusive fastball and get some weak early outs and, and have some economy-sized innings there in the middle, which got him ultimately into the eighth. Nine to two was the final score. Game two, Carter Robinson, as you mentioned earlier, got the start. The game was tied at one until the fifth inning. Uh, Coastal gets a home run in the fifth, a two-run shot, then a solo in the sixth to make it four to one. But like you mentioned, uh, you had that chance later on. Uh, bases loaded, I believe, in the sixth inning. Uh, you left those loaded. Uh, 12 left on base for the game, and as you mentioned earlier, including that tying run that was on second when the game was over. Yeah, it was. Uh, I thought Carter did a good job of keeping us in the ball game and and giving us a chance to score. And we had bases loaded a couple of different times and just couldn't get the big hit. Uh, our bullpen, I thought, did a nice job. Uh, Chipper, uh, freshman left-hander for us, comes in and and does a pretty good job there in the middle to get it to Nelly and then ultimately to Tally to give us a chance to win and, and had our opportunities, uh, just didn't take advantage of it. And I told him after the game, I really liked the way they played. That was a great ball game. And so consequently, they come back out the next day and really we play the same game. It was just kind of in reverse. Mm -hmm. We're able to drive the ball out of the ballpark and uh, really pitch it and then finish them in the in the ninth. Yeah, you jumped all over the Chanticleers early in game three. Ben Fitzgerald living up to the nickname Benny Bombs uh, with a first inning two-run shot. Two batters later, Carson Rockefeller with a solo blast. 
almost the exact same spot. And then in the third, it's Fitzgerald again, a no doubter, his second of the game to make it four to nothing. And as you mentioned, AP, Austin Perrin uh, really cruising with that early lead. He gets you all the way into the seventh and hadn't given up a run. AP was a great matchup against them with the wind blowing out and a big physical lineup that likes to hit home runs. Uh, he's got a lot of back and forth to him. And just looking at him, you think you're going to get him. And then he can stick a glove side fastball and so he can stay tight to you. Uh, and then he can really pull a change up. And he was able to land a breaking ball. And another, another start where I thought, hey, he might cruise all the way through mm -hmm. this thing. And yeah. uh, we, we had a little trouble in the seventh and uh, went ahead and decided to, to go to, to Cookie there. And I really liked the way he finished that ball game. Uh, you win this one five to three. Let's go to Monday now. A gorgeous day for baseball. Jack Burke on the hill. He gives you five shutout innings. And then Moriarty, Havard, and Christie all out of the bullpen looked ph phenomenal again. Uh, combined one hit shutout, 14 strikeouts. And then offensively, Carson Rockefort goes four for five with three RBI. Yeah, those freshmen were pretty good yesterday. And, and it was Carson's birthday. He was 19. And then Havard uh, and Christie there at the back, both freshmen. Uh, but the story of the day for me was Jack Burke. I didn't think uh, Saturday or Sunday could be topped. And then uh, he comes out and looks like he's going to, you know, carry a no-no through the fifth. Right. <laughs> and uh, we left a change up. Probably should have called another pitch. Left a change up out over just a little bit and up, and they're able to hook it down the line for a double. But that allowed us to go to Moriarty, uh, who I thought did a tremendous job, uh, which got it to Haver and then ultimately to Christie. And offense did enough. We played a different brand of baseball yesterday than we did the day before. The day before, we lengthened the field. Yesterday, we shortened it, and we were able to execute in all phases. Cajuns win at 7-0. And I want to go back to something you touched on uh, earlier. After the Saturday game, uh, in your post-game comments, you did bring up the fact that, no, we, we, we came up short, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we played bad. And, and so I, st I went back and started to look at the games on the schedule for this year, because uh, this isn't the first time this has happened. Uh, a one-run loss to Tulane in extra innings, a one-run loss to McNeese, a two-run loss in extras to Houston Baptist, a one-run loss to Southern Miss, and an extra innings loss to Southern Miss. When this team finds a way to more consistently win those kind of games, this team can be very dangerous. No doubt about it. We've been, like I told him last week, I said nobody's beaten us all year. We've lost some games mm -hmm. that we beat ourselves. Mm -hmm. And experience plays a factor in that. And we're running out of lineup that, that really and truly only has three guys that have played a full season at this level. And so what you're seeing right now is the maturation process of them continuing to work and develop and grow and get better as a ball club. Uh, no midweek games for the second week in a row. You do head to Monroe for three-game series. That series will be uh, Thursday through Saturday because of Easter weekend. The Warhawks are 3-3 three and three in conference. Uh, they gave Texas State all they could handle this week, and they've beaten Oklahoma State, who was ranked number 14 in the country at the time. So uh, it's going to be another weekend where you have to bring your A game. No doubt, and you do at this level every single week. Uh, They've beaten Oklahoma State. They've beaten Ole Miss uh, on the road. And uh, like you said, gave Texas State all they wanted this weekend. They are 3-3 three and three in the league. Uh, and it'll be a tough, uh, tough challenge for us up there. All right, Coach. As always, appreciate the time. Best of luck this weekend. And we'll see you next week as we show you the highlights and get Coach's reaction next week on Inside Louisiana Athletics. The 1-2 from Cook. Big swing and a miss. He struck him out. Connor Cook records back-to-back -back strikeouts to close this one out. And the Cajuns take their first Sunbelt Conference Series of the year, 2-1 to one over Coastal Carolina. They hang on to win this one today by a score of 5-3. to three. Next on Inside Louisiana Athletics, Darren Walker sits down with softball assistant head coach Lacey Prejean to discuss their sweep of Georgia Southern and look ahead to a long road trip. <laughs> this has got the steak and the sizzle. The tots on this are just crispy and they're flavorful. This will oh. keep you out of my tots. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. Yeah, this might keep me out of your tots.
health and safety of our students is our main concern. That is why the Office of University Housing and Residential Life has developed new protocols and procedures to strengthen our efforts to protect you during this pandemic. Housing staff is trained and ready to carry out safety protocols and guidelines set by local and national health authorities. All common areas will be cleaned and sanitized often, and no more than two residents will share a bedroom and bathroom. These are just a few of the safety measures we are implementing to ensure that our priority is you. We all have dreams. I want to dance. I like to build things. I want to explore. For over 120 years, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette has made it possible for young dreams to become realities. So go ahead, dream big. We'll help you make those dreams come true. How is yours? Because you got the spicy cheesesteak. A little fire. A little fire. And desire. Oh, I don't know about all that. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheesesteaks. You're taking it too far. I know it's date day and all. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Athletics. A big weekend for softball as they played six games in four days winning all six of them and moving to 22 and six on the season. Here now to talk about that and more is the assistant coach, Lacey Prejean. Last week when you were here, we talked about momentum and the opportunity to build some momentum. Now, from where I'm sitting, you definitely got that done, but obviously behind closed doors, what do you guys think as a, as a staff and, and the team as far as building momentum after this weekend? Yes, we, you know, we got back from UTA and we went to work. Uh, got back in the cages, back on the field, back in the bullpen, and uh, made some adjustments, and they really responded really well. Um, we came out Friday night. You know, it was a close game Friday and Saturday, one nothing. Uh, we did pitchers did everything they were supposed to do, executed defensive uh, defensively. We executed when we need to, when we needed to, and we had uh, you know big double plays turned with runners in scoring position on third, and Kendra Lamb came in, shut the door on them, and uh, so we're really excited about these last six games. Let's uh, take you uh, to the park, uh, South Dow, uh, Friday night, game one. It had a throwback feel to it. I mean, it was only played an hour and 25 minutes, and like you mentioned earlier, not a whole lot of offense uh, in this game. The only run coming from a squeeze bunt from Melissa Mayu. Um, the Raging Cajun softball tweet after the game said it all, vintage summer. She looked great yes. and throws a complete game Two hit shutout. Yes, you know, and I, I looked at the box score after, and I think Summer had 78 pitches. Olivia Lackey, the pitcher at South Al, had 79. Mm -hmm. So before I know it, I look up, and it's in the fifth inning. It seemed like it was three up, three down, both ways. And uh, so it's definitely good to see Summer hit her spots, get us back in the dugout. And, uh, you know, Melissa May, you came through uh, with a squeeze bunt. You know, Caitlin Alderink got on, and uh, she was able to execute that. Game two on Saturday, Kendra Lamb was in the circle for you, and you go to the six scoreless, uh, but she gets out of a huge jam right there. The bases were loaded, nobody out. Uh, then in the seventh, again, runners at the corners and nobody out. And again, you get out of the jam. So uh, you, too, had some opportunities to score some runs. Uh, but you finally cash in in the seventh inning. Sierra Bryan with an RBI double to score Kendall Talley. And like you said earlier, you win that one one to nothing. Two runs in two games, uh, but hey, that's all you needed, and you'll take right. the win any way you as can. As long get as it. you have one more run than they <laughs> right. do after seven innings or whatever, however, if you go extra innings. Mm -hmm. But uh, couldn't have been more proud of our pitching staff and and our catchers. You know, they deserve a lot of credit too. They're back there, they're working, and uh, it was just fun to, you know, I, I was talking to the pitchers after the game and 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 all the players, and they said finally it kind of felt like a normal atmosphere at Lamson Park, like with the fans. You know, it was a Back in, I don't want to say back and forth ball game, but you know there was many runs scored, but mm -hmm. it was you could feel a little more energy. You know it was conference. South Dallas right. gonna be it's very good this year, and uh, so it's fun to to be at home and and have that atmosphere back. Game three, uh, you win this one six to nothing. Uh, deceiving a bit though because uh, you started in the fifth inning with a scoreless tie, but you got the bats going. Alyssa Dalton a two run double. Uh, Jade Gutierrez with a solo homer. Uh, Kendra and Summer combined for nine strikeouts, and you sweep the series and all three of them shutouts against a quality team in South Al. Right, you know, and like I said, you know, they had opportunities, we had opportunities, and finally we seemed like we put it together, uh, you know, put hits back-to-back, -back, and our big players stepped up when they needed to. 
and uh, then it got the momentum going to the following game as well. Yeah, and you had to turn that page quickly because later afternoon, uh, that afternoon you open up the series with Georgia Southern. You kind of picked up where you left off in the last game. Kendall Talley, a two-run homer to get things started in the first. Melissa May with a two-run homer in the second. Jade with an RBI single, and it was five to nothing after three. And then you add four in the sixth inning, and you kind of pull away from them and win it nine to two. Right, and that's definitely way we, that's definitely a way we like to start the game. You know, starting <laughs> scoring early takes a little pressure off the pitchers, right. off of our defense, and you can do a little more things offensively as too. Be a little more aggressive. Um, so it was definitely you know a, a good starting point to get the momentum going, and uh, just happy to see that the girls responding. You know, it is a long day for them, yes. and uh, those games are important. You know. Because sometimes some of those teams will come in and they just really want to take one game from you. Right. And the key was for us to stay focused for, you know, all seven innings. You finish up on Monday with a double header. Uh, you take game one six to nothing, a three-run first inning, another uh, quick start. And when you stake summer, like you mentioned earlier, you stake summer to a three-nothing lead right out of the gate. Uh, you know, she's... She can relax a little bit. I'm speaking for her, obviously, but uh, she and Casey Dixon combined for a one-hit shutout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's always good, you know, when Casey was able to come in and get some more confidence, and uh, so it was fun, fun to watch. And also, too, uh, you know, I'm a catcher. I'm a little partial to catchers, you know, and I believe that's the game Sophie Piscos got to play in. Mm -hmm. You know, she uh, was our first college game, and it was, I'm so proud of her. You know, she's she was – answered the call. She was ready to go. She, she was prepared, and uh, so I'm proud of her as well, and she also helped their pitchers. Right. Julie is suffering from a bit of a, a thumb injury, uh, so trying to get her some time from behind mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, catching yeah. every single pitch. Um, and you guys are expecting great things out of her. Yes, yes. She, you know, she's a, a coach's dream. She, obviously, our plan was to redshirt her, her this year, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, with injuries. Um, we had to pull that red shirt, and when we asked her, she said, Coach, whatever you guys need me to do, I will do it. And credit goes to her because she was, you know, she's one of our hardest workers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times whenever they, you know, we, we say it's a red shirt year, they might not work as hard or do a lot of extra, but she was always doing extra, and she was preparing like she was starting right. every game this, this spring. So when things happened, um, she, was, she was ready to go. Work while you wait is uh, a quote that – you know, Coach Robichaud used to say around yes. here, she's living up to that. In the nightcap, you find yourself down 2 nothing in the fourth, but that's when the bats really start to get going in the bottom of that inning. You score five to take the lead. Sarah Bryan was hot that game, three for three with three RBIs, and she adds a two-run homer late, and you win that one seven to three. Right, you know, and they, you know, they scored first, and but we responded right away. You know, obviously we would, we would like to jump out ahead of them, but um, sometimes, you know, you know, when the, the right people need to be up, and uh, we got things done when we needed to with Sierra Bryant. You know, she's a, she's a firecracker. She's fun to watch in that leadoff spot, mm -hmm. and she comes to play every game. She's so intense. She helps her teammates, and uh, so it was fun to, to get out there with a sweep again. A much-needed break uh, because you don't have any midweek games this week, but now you're heading to Atlanta for a three-game series with Georgia State. Doubleheader on Friday, single game on Saturday. And then things get real, real busy <laughs> for you. Uh, you're going to go to Lamar, Sam Houston, Houston, and then Troy. We'll, we'll talk about that next <laughs> week. But uh, definitely another test coming for your crew. Definitely, yes. You know, we, we gave them off today and tomorrow to take care of their bodies, uh, mm -hmm. academics and things like that, because we know this next stretch is going to also be important. Um, so we leave on Thursday to head up to Atlanta. Again, you know, uh, Georgia State is probably the bottom of our conference. But that doesn't mean they just they're they're they have nothing to lose, you know. And we need to go up there and take care of business, and then uh, come back late Saturday night, uh, celebrate Easter, and then get back on the road on Monday and and uh, take care of Lamar and Beaumont. All right, Coach. Thank you for the time, and thanks for filling in for Coach Glasgow. Absolutely. Hopefully, we'll see you again down the road. Yes. The Raging Cajuns head to Georgia State. We'll have highlights and reaction next week on Inside Louisiana Athletics.
You are UL Lafayette's number one priority. That's why we're following guidelines set by national and local health experts to protect you during the COVID-19 pandemic. University is reorganizing rooms and spaces to reinforce social distancing, sanitizing campus buildings, and mandating that everyone wears protective equipment. But don't take our word for it. Take a look for yourself at some of the many safety measures we're implementing, and you'll see that our priority is you. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. 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 If you're happy and you know it, nothing I will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco, Zydeco, Zydeco. I feel like I would go with the signature strawberry limeade. Add in cranberry it'll give you that kick like right there in the back sonic ultimate drink stop this muscle right here might be a little tart for me you know the faculty uh will be impacted by advance uh, but but really the faculty are the ones who have driven for decades uh, this significant educational experience here. You know, it's their passion and their love of students that have made undergraduate research and creative works, uh, experiential learning in general, available to our undergraduate students. But this is going to provide a mechanism for faculty to reach more students and, and provide the resources so that these faculty can entice more students into uh, the experiential uh, learning experience. When it comes to um, professors, from a professor perspective, we are constantly looking to get students involved, you know, not just in the classroom. I mean, we, we want that student that's gonna raise their hand and engage, and we're actually looking though for not just that student, but for every student to engage in that same way. You know, that said, um, it takes a lot of resources to not just do our own work, but to train other students to do it. When I think about um, my lab, for example, there is a, there's kind of my line of research and what I would do if I were just doing my own work and not mentoring anybody. Um, and then there's all of the pieces involved in getting those students to engage in research in a meaningful way. There are um, you know, financial resources, there are training resources. If I want to teach my students not just psychology, but how to do research of psychology, and not just psychology, but my particular area of psychology, that's a big burden for me to overcome. Come. You know, I've got to convince them that it's important, um, which I think just having the advanced program in place does. Um, I've got to convince them or help them find resources, financial resources, so that they can take time off work or travel to a conference to present their work. Um, you know, and I've got to provide these fundamental skills that are about research that really aren't my expertise. Um, so what the advanced um, program does for UL Lafayette professors is it provides us with extra resources to support those students, providing them with, with uh, just the support of having an agency that's within the university that's entirely devoted to this little bit extra that they're trying to do. All you have to do is you, this your drink, and your taste buds. Sounds like happiness. So many feels. All the feels. You do the shimmy when it meets expectations and the head nod is I'm perfectly satisfied. Sonic Ultimate Drink Stop. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, Trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. You are UL Lafayette's number one priority. That's why we're following guidelines set by national and local health experts to protect you during the COVID-19 pandemic. The university is reorganizing rooms and spaces to reinforce social distancing, 
sanitizing campus buildings, and mandating that everyone wears protective equipment. But don't just take our word for it. Take a look for yourself at some of the many safety measures we're implementing, and you'll see that our priority is you. Like I would go with the signature strawberry limeade, add in cranberry. It'll give you that kick like right there in the back. Sonic ultimate drink stop. This muscle right here. It might be a little tart for me. At past commencements, I've welcomed graduates to the finish line of their academic journeys. Tonight, in these surroundings, let me welcome you instead to the end zone. We will be awarding 320 degrees this evening, and it establishes a new university record of 3,610 academic degrees awarded this academic year. So graduates, you are part of an historic occasion. No matter what degree you are receiving tonight, you will play a role in the shape of things to come. Many of you may feel uncertain right now, and that's okay. But looking at you, I am filled with hope. The sun may be setting now, but a new dawn remains ahead, and you will lead us toward it. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you for being here, and go Cages. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Monge. If you're happy and you know it's Monge. If you're happy and you know it, nothing that will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it's Monge. Monge. Mm, mm. I know where you're going. Mm. No, we couldn't have. You're right. I was going to say, we could have got one and shared, nah, that but was, that's that not true. Gonna work. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. That, that wouldn't work. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Inside Louisiana Athletics. Be sure to catch us next week for more Louisiana Raging Cajuns coverage. Go Cajuns. Off the second base for the wides. This one to right center field. It is way back. It is deep. Put another dime in the jukebox. One swing and it's a two to one game.